What's up, members of the Barrio? It's John, coming to you from the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Today, we're gonna to be continuing our Locals Guide to New York City in a neighborhood that doesn't get enough attention, in my opinion. It's relaxing, it's got a lot of history, and I think more tourists need to know about it. And today's guide is a real expert. His name's Seth. He was actually my art history professor at Rutgers. He's lived here a long time, and he's gonna be teaching you a lot of things. Hey, I'm Seth. Welcome to the Upper West Side. This is my neighborhood for the last 30 years at least. I thought we'd start here at Lincoln Center and then we're gonna go see some wonderful buildings, an under-visited museum, eat in a really super unusual restaurant with wonderful cuisine, and we're gonna end in one of my favorite parks here in New York City, and it's not Central Park. Seth, a lot of people come to New York and they wanna to go to the Met, they wanna see a show, but the ticket prices here are really expensive. You were telling me that you've got a lot of tips and tricks to save money. Absolutely, I have some wonderful tips. So first one is, um, in August, if you happen to be here in August or anybody who lives here, right here on the plaza, just where we're walking now, they set up seats and a huge screen, a five, six story size screen, and for free, for three weeks, you can screen uh, live at the Met. Um, it's really neat. People come hours early, you bring a box lunch, you sit there, and it's just wonderful. So that's number one. Often, what I do, locals often do, is if you're a free evening, just come on down. You don't need tickets, just come on down, stand right in front of one of the doors, hold a $20 bill up, and people are always selling tickets. Not scalping tickets, but people who, someone gets sick, they have extra tickets, and so you can always pick up one or two tickets on the night of the show. It's never, never fail. Another one of the great things to do here at Lincoln Center is to get tickets for the Juilliard School of the Art. Juilliard, uh, uh, basically a university for performers, is one of the great uh, music schools in the world and they always need an audience and the audience gets in for free. You see world-class or future world-class performers and for example you can see it says Juilliard, new Juilliard Ensemble, all made up of students and free tickets available. That's the key. All right, Seth, so you took us to 55 Central Park West. This is a building that people may recognize, and you're about to give them a bit of the history behind it. Yeah, it's really a remarkable building. It's done in 1930, it's called an Art Deco building. And why it's so interesting is because it's not what that building is across the street with its columns and its heavy ornamentation that's very much in the late 19th century mode. This is new, modern. Look at those, up, those vertical accents going up. This building is really fame came to it in 1984 when this was Spook Central, as uh, Bill Murray said. This is uh, where uh, Ghostbusters was filmed, at least the exterior scenes. And if you look at the building, you can see how they would run in through that canopy, which you can see in some of the stills, and that the top, which is uh, was added digitally in the film, but that's where all the, the great excitement went on. Seth, we are walking right now next to Central Park. This is such a, a beautiful neighborhood. Why do you think so many movies have filmed here? I think it's really because it's an authentic New York neighborhood that has really, you know, early 20th century, late 19th century uh, houses. It looks good, but it's, it's authentic. And I think that's why uh, um, TV shows, movies have been filmed here over the years. Seth, right now we are in front of a very iconic building in New York, the Dakota, which is world famous for where John Lennon was murdered. But there's so much more to it. Oh yeah, I think this is one of the great apartment spaces in New York. In fact, in the 1850s, if you were a rich New Yorker, you had your own house. But we were running out of space, so what'd you have, what did you do? There was this new idea that came, was coming out in Europe, and that is an apartment house. And so this, in 1880, was the first great apartment house. There was nothing here at the time. In fact, it was so far removed, somebody joked that on the next block you would be in the Dakotas. And that's why the name of it is the Dakota. Everybody wants to know where does Yoko Ono and Sean Lennon live? Well, they live in the floor that has the balcony running around it. And they have the entire floor.
Guys, as you know on this channel, we always like to show you the more unique aspects of New York. And there's so many famous museums like the Met, the Natural History Museum, but the New York Historical Society and you think doesn't get enough credit. Oh, totally. Uh, um, here in Central Park West and 77th Street is this wonderful museum dedicated to the history of the city of New York. And they have in here on the top floor the best collection of Tiffany lamps in the world. And you can see all the colors and all the uh, uh, shapes uh, uh, of the lamps. Guys, we have worked up quite an appetite roaming around the Upper West Side. We are stopping at one of Seth's favorite restaurants, and I think this is really different. It is a fusion of Chinese and Cuban cuisine. You're gonna hear all about this. For 30 years I've been coming to La Caridad, one of my favorite restaurants here in the Upper West Side. It's a fusion, as uh, John said, of Cuban and Chinese. In 1850, they abolished slavery in Cuba and they needed people to pick the sugar cane. So they brought in uh, Chinese, huge amounts of them, 250,000, mostly men. They married locals and a new culture was born. And so this, uh, this cuisine, comidas uh, china y criolla, is absolutely wonderful. We're gonna go in and try some. This is a very exciting menu because you have some hybrid dishes that you wouldn't expect at, let's say, a straight up Chinese restaurant. For example, combo fried rice with sweet plantain and salad. So you're mixing the Chinese influence with the Cuban influence and a lot of the dishes are just like that. Having a little bit of everything, we have the picadillos, which is sort of a Cuban sloppy joe. Um, this is the lechon asado or the roast pork, but uh, all a specialty on weekends and the sauce on it is just wonderful. We have the maduros or the sweet plantains, the black beans, and of course I like to add hot sauce to it. Mm. Because it is so good. I love it. It's really, really good. It tastes like my grandma cooked it. Yeah. <laughs> Very solid comfort food, as Seth was saying. We have so many different things mixed on this plate right now. Very good choice on the Upper West Side. And something a little bit different, which is what I really like about it. continue the food theme on the Upper West Side, and it seems like every New Yorker has their favorite deli. Zabar's is Seth's favorite deli. Why do you like this place so much? It's one of the old-fashioned delicatessen food stores in the Upper West Side. 1934, Louis Zabar's founded it right here in this spot. And today what I like about it is it's, it has everything. There's almost nothing it doesn't have. So I'm always coming here at least twice a week. Guys, let's check it out walked in and the aroma of cheese is ridiculous. It's just, there's cheese in every single direction. This is the famous dish counter. Uh, smoked salmon, white fish, uh, herring. It's just remarkable. And so this is the, where people come, they pack it up and they fly home with it. Rugula, they have really good rugula. Um, and the macaroons. Of course, they're preparing for Passover, so there's a lot of Passover stuff here. But yeah, their arugula is like world class, and their babka, their chocolate babka. Chocolate babka, Adriana's <laughs> favorite. <laughs> Walking through this store is like a, a sensory experience. You have the classical music playing, and then you have the different smells of every room, from the coffee here, to the cheese, to the meat to the desserts, like, whew, this is a very cool store. I wish I had one of these in the village. There's arugula, absolutely excellent. Uh, Seth, good call on that. Now, you've lived here for 30 th plus years. 30 plus years. Neighborhoods change a lot in New York. What, what would you say are the biggest changes that have occurred in the Upper West Side? Well, in my area, around 72nd Columbus, lots of little small family shops, all gone. Uh, now it's sort of cutesy, upscale boutiques selling shoes and jeans and things. That certainly has changed. And so uh, it's still sort of a nice, quiet residential neighborhood, but the, the diversity in some ways has, has changed. Um, certainly economic diversity. There was a much wider range uh, of folks 30 years ago. Now it's really more upper middle class 
bordering on rich. Um, it's a very cool place to live. I like the neighborhood. Um, I like the people. Um, and I like that it's well connected to the rest of the city. We have great subway lines um, here. So yeah, it's a, it, it's a neat place to live. Riverside Park is absolutely gorgeous on a warm day like this. You just have to come enjoy the ambiance here. A lot of dogs running around, a lot of families, a lot of people. And Seth said that this is his favorite local park. What is it you enjoy about this park so much? I like Riverside Park because it's a really underused park. There are two parts to it, the promenade which is up here and then along the river there's a, a, a wonderful path that you can walk right against the right along the river. Um, up here um, this is the summer, the, the, the roses and, uh, are, are in bloom, everything's overgrown and there are just real people walking around with their dogs, with their kids playing. I also like that this spot, just where we're standing, was in um, uh, You Got Mail with uh, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. In fact, just where we're standing is where the proposal was and often New Yorkers come or people come and they make their uh, uh, proposals right here exactly where Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan uh, were. Special thanks to Seth, who was an amazing local guide. This is what this series is all about, bringing locals to show us their favorite parts of New York. Guys, thank you so much for watching, as always. Until next time.